Alright, what's up guys, it's Wombat, and today, uh, we're taking a little break from the Beyblade videos, so I can just hop on the Bakugan bandwagon real quick. So, way back in, like, the first release of the game, I actually was super into it. Um, I bought a bunch of the figures, a bunch of the cards. I went to a few, or I went to two Toys R Us tournaments. There was only, like, three other people there, and I won both the tournaments. But, um, this is actually, I'm going to put, like, the classic Wombat twist on it, even though it's 2019, and we're keeping it all positive vibes, like Kimbo Slice. But, uh, I'm going to talk about the, uh, the deck that I used to win these tournaments. It's been a while since I lost with this deck. But, uh... Just a disclaimer, I am probably nowhere near the level of competitive at Bakugan as I am at Beyblade. I'm making no claim that this is a top tier deck by any stretch of the imagination. Um, I thought I had like a solid grasp on the rules and the gameplay, but uh, that I probably didn't have as deep of an interest or a knowledge of the game as I thought I did. I don't even know like all of the cards or which one is the best card to use. I used what worked best for me out of what I had and what I liked because um so as you can imagine I was in this game when I was in like fourth grade, fifth grade, middle school and since I was an edgy teen back then I used uh the Ventus Bakugan because Shun was my favorite character but that's literally only why but anyways, um, so by the the old rules of the game, I know it's changed somewhat in this new re-release, but you were allowed to have uh, three Bakugan, and then two, they were called support pieces, which included like a trap, a battle gear, um, I think they had those like mobile assault vehicles, which I got a few of, but I thought were like, I don't know, kind of dumb, and then, um, there's also like the Mech to Gen and the Baku Nanos and other stuff like that. I feel like there's one other thing that I'm missing, but I don't know. Some of the, I didn't really keep up with the series after Gundalian Invaders just because it was kind of dying. I lost interest in it. Um, but anyways, so the Bakugan I used were uh, Phosphos, which was like my favorite Bakugan back in the day. Uh, Bendo14 from Bakugan Wiki, if you're still watching this, shout out to you, because you were the only other person who liked Phosphos the whole time. Uh, this Bakugan had 750G power, which was a lot. This was like, it wasn't a lot, because like, I know during the later series you started having things with like over a thousand, but I don't know. I just didn't really buy too many of those. I like this one, so I used it. Uh, and then I had Ventus Plithion. This was like the only one I could ever find. Um, and Plithion was another one of my favorites from the anime. Uh, I think it only had, yeah, 520 G power. So I kind of wish I could have found one with uh, more G power at some point, but I never did. I only ever saw this one and I bought it when I had the chance. And then, last but not least, I have uh, Harpus, which only has 300 G power, and you'll see why in a few minutes. Uh, and then for my two support pieces I had Twin Destructor, which had 100 G power, and then Villainator, which had 200. Oh man, they're too top heavy, I can't balance them. But these were all the uh, the actual game pieces I used. Now let's go over the cards. Um, so you could have three gate cards and then three ability cards, one of each color. And then I also had these two, the cards to uh, support the battle gear, or the battle gear cards that you could play also. So for my gate cards, I had like... Uh, 
the Phosphos Armory, which was specifically for Phosphos. Uh, it gets 100 G power for each battle gear played at the battle. It also had like a, a decent boost for Ventus. So I would play these three together and then along with the, the Twin Destructor card, which gives you 100 G power if you have two or Bakugan in your use pile than your enemy. So you'd easily boost to like uh, 900, 1000, 1100 at least. Um, you could also play other ability cards on top of that. Um, and then my silver gate card was Winds of Change. It says, gear give Bakukor their printed G power in extra time. I wasn't really sure what a Bakukor was. Um, apparently, all of these count as Bakukor. I asked on Beyblade Wiki a long time ago, like, oh, are these all core Bakugan? And someone said yes. So, this would allow things like uh, Phosphos or Plithion or Harpus, like, who normally have lower G powers, to compete with some of the, the heavier hitters with their battle, or at least with their. With, yeah. Because otherwise, they aren't going to be very competitive with. 750, 520, and 300, but if it's um, 1500, 1040, and 600, that's at least a higher chance of being able to win just with raw G power. And then last but not least, the reason I have um, Harpus in my deck especially was this, uh, the Needle's Eye card, which gives zero points to Ventus since it's the Bakugan with the lowest G power wins this battle. And, uh, good luck trying to get below 300. So I would pretty much use this for a guaranteed win. And I'd be able to use it twice because of one of the ability cards I had. Which was... Um... Yeah, I had this, uh, green ability card that I actually won at one of the tournaments. Which was, uh... Play at the start of the battle. Swap the gate card with one from your used pile. So I would, uh, roll this out first. Win with Harpus. The gate card would go to my used pile, and when I used this one again, I'd basically get to win the same card twice, or I'd win whichever card was in that battle, and then I'd win this one again. And since it was first to three cards won, it was basically like a pretty easy 2-0 for me. Um, my other gate card was, or my other ability card was uh, Moon Lance, play after you roll a Ventus Bakugan, and no battle resulted, take another turn. Um... This would basically just let me set up gate cards or uh, position my Bakugan the way I wanted to, assuming that I... Or it let me also like re-roll if I missed, which actually happened more frequently than I like to admit, but whatever. And then um, my last ability card was the Sleek Jab. 200 Aventus if your enemy has a trap or a battle gear. Um... So, just because, I mean, most both of the tournaments I played in were doing the uh, the Season 3 Gundalian Invaders, so both of the traps and the battle gears were pretty common to see, and it was kind of like my, my anti-meta strategy that didn't... I, well, it, it worked, I just don't know how well it worked, because I only played against the same three people twice. But, uh... I don't know. Even if it, even if it's like not competitive by a definition, I don't even know if a competitive Bakugan community even existed um, back in the day. I know, like, I tried to find one, and then part of the reason I lost interest in the hobby and stick stuck with Beyblade is because Beyblade, I found the WBO and other competitive communities, and Bakugan, I never really found such a thing. So. um... That's kind of why, but even if it's not like the best top tier competitive deck, which it's definitely not, I could admit that because I didn't know what was really good or top tier at the time. I don't know if anyone really does because there wasn't much of a competitive community, but you can you can at least see that I like put some thought into how everything fits together, how it all works. I made I had like a legitimate strategy behind this that I could use to win battles. 
So, um, yeah, I'm hoping to pick up some of the newer stuff at some point, once it comes out in stores, maybe. I, don't, I probably won't get super back into it. I know they are pushing the competitive aspect a bit more this time, which will be interesting because, like I said, that's what kept me into Beyblade, but not the Bakugan. So if the competitive scene really takes off, I might invest more into it, but I also feel like they're, going, they're trying to make it more of a trading card game and less like the, um, the mix of the, I guess, the action figures and the trading cards like it was the first time around, so, I, and I know trading card games, I have a bunch of friends who are into like Pokemon, Yu-Gi-Oh, Magic, stuff like that, I know those can get pretty expensive with all like the different formats and the ban lists and all these new cards coming out, so I don't know. If it becomes super expensive, I'm probably not going to get back into it, but yeah, uh, we'll see. There may be, I might start doing more Bakugan videos if I do get into it, um, just because I know there is some interest in just the gameplay and competitive stuff. And trust me, like, if it is, if it does become a thing, I'll be a lot better informed than I was in this video. Uh, instead of just using, like, my favorite thing, and I'll try to actually use, like, the best stuff, but who even knows. Um, but yeah, thanks for keeping it positive with me. Make sure to smash that subscribe button, uh, and I'll see you guys next time.